So today we are going to be taking a look at GNOME 40 on the Raspberry Pi 4. I've been trying to get GNOME 40 on my Raspberry Pi 4 for a very long time right now. So I was trying different distros, but none of them actually included GNOME 40. And I was just trying so many different methods and I was not being successful. And then till now, I found that there is a Manjaro beta GNOME image on the Manjaro ARM community GitHub page. So this is a community image and I first downloaded it. I downloaded this pre-release version right here and it was extremely buggy it was like not usable whatsoever there were so many graphical glitches and it was just not working at all it was so bad so I was kind of discouraged then and so I went back to the GitHub page and I scrolled down to the bottom and I saw that they had Manjaro ARM 21.04 that was the official version so I downloaded that version flashed it to an SD card and then I realized hey this isn't GNOME 40, this is still the older version of GNOME. So it was kind of sad then because I was really excited to try out GNOME 40 on my Raspberry Pi 4. So then I saw that there were a ton of updates needed. So I tried updating it and the update process did take a very long time. It took almost an hour to update that system, but it definitely was worth it. Now I have the full blown GNOME 40 on my Raspberry Pi 4 with amazing performance. And this is a um, video I'm excited to make and I'm going to be showing you guys the desktop, the performance, and we're just going to take a look at GNOME 40 on the Raspberry Pi 4 and really just seeing what it holds. So let's jump over to the desktop. Alrighty, so before we jump into basically what the desktop looks like, I want to first take a look at the RAM because it's a fresh boot, so the RAM should be pretty accurate for a clean boot. So we go over to Activities tab, and right here we have our terminal. I'm going to click that, and then we'll just tap into HTOP and see how much RAM we're using right now. So right now, on a fresh boot, our memory usage is at 584 megabytes. This is so little for GNOME. This is probably the least RAM I have ever seen in GNOME on the Raspberry Pi 4, or in general, this is amazing. Because if you watch my regular videos, you know that GNOME, like Ubuntu or whatever, uses tons of RAM. It uses almost a gigabyte of RAM on idle. This is using basically half the RAM that Ubuntu uses on the Raspberry Pi 4. That is amazing. That is incredibly encouraging to see that it's using so little RAM. My core usage is down, and this is just really good performance. I mean, this is amazing. So now let's jump over to the desktop and see what applications come pre-installed and we'll take a look at the performance a bit later. So right here our default wallpaper is just the default Manjaro ARM wallpaper, looks pretty cool. Right here we actually have these two workspace switchers which don't come pre-installed in GNOME, the Manjaro team has added that and I can respect that, it looks pretty cool, we can easily switch between them. Right here we have our default GNOME menu, we have wired connected, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, settings, lock power. And I do want to mention, I actually am running this on Wayland. Wayland has actually been incredibly responsive, and I have not had many bugs whatsoever. So Wayland is looking pretty good for GNOME on the Raspberry Pi 4 right now. Or Zorg does come pre-installed in here too, so you can log out and switch to Zorg if you ever need it. But Wayland has been incredibly good for me. And my GNOME version you see right here is 40. This is a 64-bit operating system, and this is Manjaro ARM. So let's take a look at the desktop right now. So we go to Activities, and this is the new GNOME 40 look. I am really digging this GNOME 40. It has so many more improvements from the last version, and it looks amazing. They really thought this out on how it will look better and how it would perform better. So our two desktops, rather than being on the left right here, like on the other versions, are in the middle right here, and it actually really makes sense. So with the cursor, I can actually switch between them, and right now I only have two desktops. You know, if I want to open a, have a third desktop, I just open up an application in this one, and then right here, I go back to this one, open up one more application, let's say the terminal in this one, and it automatically gives me a third desktop. So you can actually have as many workspaces as you want. Keep on opening applications, different desktops, and you will have them. So it's actually really cool that it works this well, and it's just encouraging. Let's close out of both of these, and let's take a look at the pre-installed applications. So with the Manjaro theming, we actually have this nice dock on the bottom right here. It looks pretty cool, to be honest, and our our favorite applications are screenshot, file manager, terminal, and Firefox. So we can click on show applications and it brings us all these applications pre-installed. And I really like the layout of this. There's a lot of applications on here. You can really see it really well. And 
it just makes more sense from the last version of Manjaro. So let's say I want to switch the application place. I hold down and I can easily switch them. I can also create folders like an iOS or an Android device. I put it right here and I can actually make it my own folder. So it, it really helps just designing your desktop, making it a lot more clean. And it's just a really easy tool to use and I've really enjoyed it. So now let's take a look at the pre-install applications. So it comes with Adroom software, which is which is the default Manjaro software center. But with GNOME 40, there are actually a lot of updates to this. The new graphical user interface looks really beautiful. This thing is really cool. Like they've totally redesigned the application and the app store looks really pretty. And this actually has a lot of applications like Chromium. Let's search for Chromium. Right here we have Chromium, we can install it with this one button and it's in the repository. So it's really easy to use and it's a really nice app store. It probably is one of my favorite app stores because Mandrara really has this amazing app store. And you can actually enable the AUR packages by going to preferences and then going over to, well you have to first type in your password and you go over to, go over to third party and you can enable AUR support. Just click that and then that's all you have to do to have AUR packages in your graphical user interface thing. So, and then let's take a look at the other applications. So right here, we just have the normal SSH server apps right here. We have Cheese, which is, I'm not actually sure what Cheese is, I forgot. Cheese is a photo device. So if you had a webcam, I could take a picture with that, I guess. And then what else do we have in here? We have Color Picker, which is like a color wheel. We have the Config Editor Document Scanner, which is actually pretty nice that they include this in GNOME. It works pretty well, and it's just a nice application. I'm in the wrong desktop. Oops. So here we are, and it's just a document scanner, basically. And then, other than that, we have a lot of pre-installed applications on here. We have Evolution, which is like a mail client. Extensions, let's take a look and see what GNOME extensions we're actually using. Okay, here we are. So our application menu is turned off. Auto move Windows is turned off. We have PAMAC, which is this is to do with the add or move software. We have removal drive menu enabled, user themes, and workspace indicator. So there's a good amount of theme extensions in here. You could always add more if you want to yourself. And other than that, in here we have firewall, which is cool. We have HTOP, which I personally installed myself. We have icon browser, image viewer, quantum, and we have all the default LibreOffice suit applications. So those are pretty normal. They're on basically every Linux distribution, nothing special there. And then we have LibreOffice Math, Writer, Manjaro Settings Manager, which there really isn't anything special in here. You can basically just change the lo location and stuff like that. So yeah. And then to look a bit more right here, we have the M tray, which is like a news thing. I personally don't enjoy this. I always disable it because it starts up on boot. And then we have No Maps. No Maps has actually brought to us so many new updates, and No Maps looks really cool. I've been playing around with this for the last few days, and No Maps has really improved. Like, let's search New York City. I, have li I obviously don't live here. I'm just Googling that because let's go to New York. And you see right here, it looks really cool. It gives us some nice details about New York City right here. And if we want to zoom in, we can just zoom in real fast. And it works pretty much like Google Maps. And it's a really nice desktop app to have pre-installed. And they've just done a lot of improvements. And I, it's just cool to run on our Raspberry Pi like this. So that is basically no maps. And next in line right here, we have uh, MVP Media Player Music, NeoVim, which is like a editor for documents we have a password and key saver we have gnome photos gnome photos is also pretty nice they've done some improvements in gnome 40 you can open, open up photos and stuff like that it works pretty well and next in line we have the pulse audio volume test utility capture device things right here we have our manjar settings text editor and then utilities this folder comes pre-installed like this i did not even make it myself we have gnome discs tweaks no tweaks actually is pretty nice on here. I really do enjoy it. And if we go to appearance, our applications, we're using the Matcha Dark Sea, which is like Manjaro's specialty. If we wanted the default, we could go with Adaweda, and we can make this look more like the default GNOME. But I really do enjoy the 
Manjaro theming. It looks pretty cool. The cursor is Adoida. Our icons are Papyrus and our shell. If you wanted the more default gnome shell, you can go to default right here and the bar really changes on the top. We go to activities. This part right here looks a bit different. So if you're a bigger fan of this type of look, you can sw always switch the shell over to default and do that. But the Manjaro shell actually does look really good in my opinion. They've really done a good job with the theming and making it look amazing. That's why I'm just staying with the default Manjaro shell. And then the fonts, everything else like that, you can go in here and change it if you do like. Like... The startup applications M tray is here. I could just remove that if I don't want it, and bam, it won't auto start anymore. So it's just really simple to use this operating system like that. And yeah, then we have YAD settings. YAD comes pre installed in here. That's pretty interesting. We have videos and GNOME Weather. GNOME Weather is actually also a really nice weather app. I've had a fun time playing around with this, and it worked incredibly well. Let's also search New York City in here. can't spell today New York right here let's just go right here and then we can see our daily thing so this is in Fahrenheit right now if I want to switch I go right here temperature unit I could turn that to Celsius if I if I like and it just works really well we can see hourly or daily and it's a really nice weather application that they give you pre-installed on GNOME 40 so I mean yeah I don't want on that desktop let's go back here and then let's look a little bit more. And that's basically all that we come pre-installed. We do come pre-installed with Gparted. And we have this really nice type to search place right here. We can search for literally anything we want and launch it. And it works incredibly well. So this app thing is really not as buggy as I expected. And it works really well. So now let's take a look at some web browsing and see how that performance actually ends up being. So I'm just going to stick to Firefox because Firefox is pretty good on Manjaro. And I've had a good experience with it. Let's type like Pi4, and let's see how the web browse web browsing is actually. So it loaded up pretty quick. I click on like the Raspberry Pi org place, and it also loads up pretty quick. So web browsing is looking extremely smooth on here. I mean, you're not gonna have any problem with opening up tabs on here, doing doing different stuff like that. It's gonna be really smooth, and it's just gonna perform well. Like I open up three tabs right here. They all load up pretty quick, and it just works really well, so web browsing on no Manjaro is going to be pretty darn good. So now let's take a look at some video playback. So let's go right here and let's just go open up one more tab and let's open up YouTube. So right here we have YouTube and let's just see how Big Buck Bunny plays at 720p. I'm not going to try 1080. 1080 really isn't worth it anymore because the Raspberry Pi really can't handle it. But 720 it can usually handle on most operating systems, so let's try that out. So right here it's just loading and let's make sure we are actually at 720 once the video loads up. So we click right here, the gear icon, and right now we are at 720. So let's open up our stats for nerds and see where this is. I'll make this a bit bigger. And right here we are dropping, right now we've dropped 3 frames out of 14 frames. So it's not the worst, I've seen much worse video playback on the Raspberry Pi, but I mean, it says we're dropping like 15 frames, but this is incredibly watchable. It's, it's not that bad video performance. I've seen extremely worse on different operating systems. So don't worry. If you do install this on your Raspberry Pi, you will be getting some pretty good video playback, to be honest. Let's skip to the middle right here and see what happens. So, I mean, it, it also loads up incre incredibly fast, and it looks good, too. So, video playback is a plus on Manjaro. Manjaro has always been ahead of other upbringing systems on the Raspberry Pi in terms of video playback. They really do it really well, and it always works incredibly well. So, let's go open up a terminal real fast, and then, yeah. So yeah, this is GNOME 40 on the Raspberry Pi 4. I am very happy that I have finally been able to test this out on my Raspberry Pi 4 since I've been really wanting to do this for a very long time. So like I said in the beginning of the video, if you do want to install this, download the 21.04 from this GitHub page and then do a system update. If you don't do a system update, you won't be getting the new GNOME 40 update. But GNOME 40 has been a really good experience on my Raspberry Pi and I can say this is probably some of the best GNOME performance I have ever gotten on my Raspberry Pi 4. So that is a big statement because 
Ubuntu does run pretty well, but it uses so much more RAM right here. I'm only using about 500 megabytes of RAM on idle. That is incredible to think. This is no I'm only using that much RAM. So Manjaro has definitely gone a long way on the Raspberry Pi 4. This desktop environment does have a long way to improve because there are still some bugs, but I'm encouraged to see GNOME 40 running on the Raspberry Pi 4 like this. So I'd recommend you guys trying this out and letting me know down below in the comments what you think about this. So, thanks for watching.